Hey guys, Sam David here. Welcome to a sunny Stratton in uh, Vermont. It's not sunny at all, it's raining. We are here at uh, pretty much some mountain ski resort, so it looks a lot like Blue Mountain, but we're not at the OCR World Championships. We're at Noram here. It's a lot of swinging apparatus. As you can see, you can swing on the first one, swing on the second one, both of those swing this way, and then you can uh, grab the wheel, which turns and also swings, and you gotta get a really good swing to get to the, uh, the second to last uh, grip, and then another T-bar and ring the bell. Here, La Gaffe du Draveur from Northman Race from Marco Bedard. This configuration isn't that easy because there is nowhere to put your feet on. So whenever it rains, obviously if you don't have any tape, it's hard to uh, hard to shimmy over there. And there are hockey pucks, obviously. We're in Canada, right? Um, or, well, the obstacle is from Canada. Another hockey puck for your hands. And then another pole here. And you gotta climb up on that pole. Obviously make it uh, go over and ring the bell. It's cool called Skitch by Force 5 again. Um, you already know the horizontal bars, but this time there's a twist. You were hanging on them by those hooks with a vertical grip like this, and then uh, shimmy across basically. And you can imagine well that uh, when you're sliding across, you get your hand stuck there, and then you have to make the transition, either only one hook or both, to slide all the way to hopefully the bell. Skull Valley's here as well. Uh, that claimed a few bands as well so it, as uh, it started raining. Uh, probably not as much as Stairway to Heaven, but uh, still a few bands. Um, you're basically forced to go on one side of the obstacle, so one leading hand, uh, and then you've got the uh, the hanging monkey bars with tape on it, so you can really hurt your hands if you really swing. And then you got to switch the other side to get those skulls and the uh, the bell. Here we have um, probably one of the obstacles that claimed the most bands, at least on the 15k when it started raining. Uh, it is a rig, obviously, and it changed configurations a little bit from one race to the other, but the basic sections stayed the same. So you've got a hanging section here with um, rings and then a T-bar at the end. You've got some monkey bars. They added the foot rings today because of the rain but yesterday I didn't have them and as you can see they're pretty thick bars so it's uh, it's kind of hard to grab especially when they're wet and then a bunch of ropes that you swing from one to the other to the uh, hanging horizontal bar and then the uh, the bell at the end. The floating walls are here as well they were there at the Blue Mountains for the OCR WC and it's the exact same configuration so you've got three climbing walls that are hanging from ropes and then um, a net that you have to climb up over and then four more uh, floating walls to a rope and then you go down the net and on to the next obstacle. Here we got uh, the last meaningful obstacle basically on the course, uh, both for the 3k, the 15k and the uh, team race. It is the uh, urban sky and it begins with uh, a couple of wheels with a uh, ring in between them. One of the wheels is slanted as you can see, then you grab the rope and then hit the bell. Second section you can drop and then the second section is a kind of a twister obstacle. Ring the bell again, you can drop again and then you've got a bunch of swinging uh, or pivoting grips and swing the bell at the end. On this obstacle, if you uh, ring the bell, you can go to the next section, you can rest a little bit, as some people are doing right now. But if you do not ring the bell, you gotta go all the way to the beginning of the rig and not just the section that you uh, just uh, didn't finish. Obviously, there's a few obstacles that I couldn't show you because they're scattered all over the mountain and I am done with the hiking for this weekend. Thank you very much. Stairway to Heaven, the, the rain started. I think it started uh, being one of the band cutters out there. Uh, there was a trapeze obstacle with some monkey bars and some swinging trapezes um, uh, somewhere in the mountain as well. At the, uh, at the very top, as soon as you reach the top at the 15k, you had a rig that uh, also needed a little bit of momentum to pass and then uh, some uh, horizontal bars with ropes that you had to climb to get to. And a few others that were scattered all over, uh, but I think yeah, I showed you the main ones. As far as the racing, 3k was a really good race, not too much hiking or climbing, so it was a fast paced race. I'm always looking for more and more technical obstacles, so you know, I'm not the one to ask, but I think the obstacles did matter. and there were enough of them to make a difference so it was a good uh, good race from that standpoint uh, 
I think it was pretty spectacular to see the guys go uh, go quickly over those obstacles. And then the 15K was uh, basically a hiking race. We are used to it in the uh, northeastern, you know, Canada and the United States. That's the type of racing we have here on the ski hills. So not hugely original as far as the course goes. The obstacles were really well scattered on the course, so you couldn't really ask for much more than that. But it was a, a lot of up and down and up and down. Apart from that, yeah, obviously we would have wished for rain in the morning rather than the afternoon, so you could challenge a little bit more the uh, the pro waves and uh, give a bit of a break to the journeyman and uh, age groupers out there to have a little bit more fun and maybe spend less time, you know, rain soaked uh, on the mountain. Uh, can't wait for uh, OCR World Championships in London now. So I'll see you guys at the next race and hopefully I can shoot some more video from you. For you.